If you listen very carefully, you can hear the googly eyes jingle. Hello and welcome to another episode of Running With Scissors. I'm Arcady and I'm back again with more very accessible crafting and cosplay help. This month I'm going to be walking you through an entire prop build. Right now I'm working on a cosplay of the character Artemis from the video game Hades and today I'm going to be building her quiver and showing you how to build one too. Even though I'm building a specific design, Artemis' quiver is actually a pretty basic shape, so the techniques in this tutorial can be customized to make any similar style quiver. I'm going to cover building the base of the quiver, making it look like leather, weathering it, and adding attachments and details to it, which is really all you need to know to make a quiver. It's a very customizable type of prop, and it's not too terribly complicated to make. That said, I'm going to be completely honest and transparent here. I had never actually built a quiver like this before. And you're probably thinking, geez, Arcady, why would you admit to not knowing what you're doing, and how do you expect us to learn from you now? Well, for one, I am holding the finished prop in my hand right now, and it does look pretty good, so you can surmise that the build goes smoothly and I'm capable of teaching you to do the same. But secondly, one of my not-so-secret goals of this entire series is to demystify some parts of cosplay that nobody likes to talk about. And one of the things none of us cosplayers like to admit is just how often we end up doing things that we don't actually know how to do. And that's fine. It's actually better than fine, it's great, and it's completely normal. Cosplay is essentially pulling custom-made fantastical garments and items out of thin air, usually by yourself, in your kitchen, at 3 in the morning, with bargained in fabric and a budget of $50. Of course there's no guidebook for that. Even if you have years of skills and knowledge to build off of, you're still inevitably going to run into some projects that you've never made before. But we all learn through trial and error, educated guesses, messing up a lot, and asking other cosplayers who have messed up before us for help. So this is your little mini lesson hidden within this tutorial. You don't always need to know what you're doing to make a great looking prop. You just need to realize that you're fully capable of learning and not be afraid to try. I believe so much in this idea that I'm willing to do it on camera. And I'm going to do it with three of my favorite materials. Craft foam, hot glue, and googly eyes. But before we can grab our hot glue, we have to determine how large our quiver needs to be. If you're working on a project that has a lot of great reference photos, like Katniss from The Hunger Games or Laura Croft from the Tomb Raider series, it's easy to measure how large their quivers are in proportions to the characters' bodies and then adjust it to your own size. For example, if you can see on a picture of Laura Croft, the top of her quiver starts at her shoulder and the bottom of it ends at her hip, you simply have to take your measuring tape and measure from the top of your shoulder to the edge of your hip. And that's how long your quiver needs to be to look proportional on you. If you don't have great reference photos or your character has less realistic body proportions though, this trick isn't going to work. If you look at my reference photo for Artemis, you can see why this method isn't always ideal. For starters, there's only one reference photo of her in existence, and in it her quiver is half hidden behind her body. She's also in a pose that isn't easy to measure on top of. In addition to all of that, her arrows and quiver are exaggerated. So to figure out how large my quiver needs to be, I'm going to have to do some math. And to start that math, I need to figure out how long my arrows are going to be, because the length of your arrows dictates the length of your quiver. And I have not yet made Artemis's arrows. Spoiler alert, that's next month's tutorial. But that's okay, because I can easily and unscientifically figure out how long my arrows need to be just by measuring my arms. The length of your arrow depends on your draw length, which is the distance you would pull an arrow back before loosing it. To determine that, I simply hold one end of my measuring tape in my left hand, hold that arm out like I'm holding a bow, and then pull the measuring tape back and rest it along my jaw. I rest it about here because here's what looks good in photographs. And that should be roughly the length that your arrow needs to be. For me, that's about 28 inches. We can use this number to determine our quiver length because in general, quivers cover a little more than half of our arrows. So you're going to half your arrow length and then add about two or three inches back onto that number. For me, I half 28 inches to 14 inches Add roughly 3 inches back onto it to get a quiver length of 17 inches. 17 inches is how long I would need my quiver to be to look proportional on me. However, like I said earlier, Artemis's quiver and arrows are slightly exaggerated. They're larger than they would be in real life, so I need to exaggerate my props a little bit too. And to figure out how much I should exaggerate my props, I'm going to do some extremely complicated math right now. I'm simply going to add 2 inches onto both my arrow length and my quiver length. That's enough extra length to look slightly bigger than normal, but not so big that it's disproportionate on me and looks weird. So my arrow length is going to be 30 inches and my quiver length is going to be 19 inches. So with my quiver's length measurement in mind, I pull out some construction paper and start drafting mock-ups to determine the other measurements I need. I'm also going to need the circumference of the top opening, the circumference of the bottom opening, and take into account that it has a taper towards the bottom. If that sounds like a lot and you don't know where to start, 
Yeah, me too. I'm not mathematically minded and training yourself to think what a three dimensional shape would look like as a flat pattern is really difficult. Honestly, I start this step by eyeballing it. I make a freehand rough sketch, adjust it as needed, and then add the math in later. So if you're getting bogged down by numbers, you don't actually have to start with them first. Draw the shape that you think looks right, modify it if it's not, and then measure it to get the numbers you need. As you can see, I made a whole lot of templates before I found the right one, so trial and error is perfectly acceptable. After sketching and adjusting my sizing, I end up with my quiver being 19 inches long, the upper opening being 16 inches across, and the bottom being 4 inches across that then tapers outwards to where it meets at the top. I then transpose those measurements onto my craft foam. I'm using 4mm foam from my local craft store so that it's durable and looks heavy but is still very lightweight. Next, I cut my base shape out with a box cutter or a pair of scissors. About four steps from now, I'm going to put in some decorative lacing up along the quiver seam, but I need to plan for that now by putting the holes into it. I measure and mark out where I want my holes and lacing to go, grab a little tool called an awl that's designed for punching holes in leather, and punch tiny holes in my foam. Be very careful using the awl. It is sharp and you don't want to punch it through your hand by mistake. Once I have my base cut out and holes punched, it's time to make it look not like foam. Instead of painting this like leather though, I'm going to wrap it in fabric, which is a really great way to fake leather. I have some nice lightweight fabric that has an interesting texture and shine that I think will work great for this. Make sure you always iron your fabric first though. You don't want any wrinkles, so take the time to iron it. I then place my foam on the fabric, trace out its shape with a marker that I'm sure won't bleed through my fabric, give it about an inch of seam allowance to fold over, and then cut it out. Then I'm just going to hot glue my fabric to my foam. Because hot glue is awesome, especially for attaching fabric to foam. It's cheap, easily available, and doesn't put off any toxic fumes, so it's safe to use indoors. There are two things to watch out for with hot gluing fabric though. One, you want to test your glue on a scrap of your fabric first to make sure the glue doesn't bleed through to the other side and looks like a visible wet spot. And two, hot glue can look lumpy under fabric if you're not careful. To avoid that, always put the hot glue on your fabric and then press your foam onto it. The fabric absorbs the glue just enough to get it to lay flatter and not lump up. I place my glue along the edges of the fabric, press my foam into it, smooth it and roll it as I go, and hold it in place as it dries. Once the main section is dry, I hot glue along the outside edges and fold my seam allowance over the back like I'm wrapping a present. Once it's dry, you have a very neat looking leather quiver base. Once my fabric is attached, I go back with my awl to the holes I put in for my lacing details earlier and re-punch through the fabric too so that the holes aren't blocked. Before I connect the seams of my quiver and lock it into shape, I'm going to quickly paint the interior dark brown to hide the fact that this is just foam. I'm doing this very roughly with cheap acrylic paint and I'm only covering about half of it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be enough to hide the bright white in case a weird camera angle would happen to show the interior of the quiver. For connecting the quiver together, I'm going to need a bit of a stronger adhesive than just hot glue. We want our quiver to be sturdy, so we need a pretty strong adhesive, which is why I'm going to be using contact cement. And I'm going to do it outside, in good ventilation, while wearing a respirator. Contact cement works by bonding to itself. I apply it along the edges where my two pieces are going to connect, wait 15 minutes for the contact cement to prep, and then carefully press the edges together. Definitely go slowly and be careful when working with contact cement. Once two pieces covered in contact cement touch, they'll permanently stick together, so you really only get one shot at this. While the main portion is fully drying, I need to create a small piece to cap off the bottom with. I'm going to be doing this by following the exact same steps, but on a smaller scale. I cut out a piece of foam to fit the space, trace its shape out onto my fabric, cut out the fabric, and then hot glue the fabric to the foam. To connect the bottom piece to the rest of the quiver, I'm going to coat its underside and the base of the quiver in contact cement, wait 15 minutes for it to prep, and then carefully connect the two pieces. Once it's all stuck together, let it sit to fully dry for a few minutes, and then the base of your quiver is done. Next up, we're going to add some weathering and details to it. My fabric already has some nice texture and variation in it, but I want to add a little more weathering because I love weathering. I'm just going to grab some black acrylic paint and a stiff bristled brush and dry brush it onto places that I want to look more aged or damaged. Once you're happy with how weathered it is, set it aside to dry and then we're going to prep to add some decorative stitching. Because our quiver is already held together with contact cement, our stitching isn't going to be functional. It's purely for appearances. I'm going to take some thin leather cording and with a large glover's needle, lace it through the holes I punched earlier. Once I reach the top, I tie off the end and hot glue it to the inside of the quiver so that it stays in place. Artemis's quiver has a gold cord border around the top with a tassel in the front, 
So I got these graduation honors cords online for like $6 and I think they're going to work perfectly. Since we're attaching fabric to fabric, I'm going to be using hot glue again, but a fabric glue like Sobo would work well too. Glue it down along the edge, hold it in place as it dries before moving on to the next section, and then make sure you gunk up the ends very well with hot glue so that it doesn't fray. Next up, the quiver has a string of green beads underneath the golden border. To keep the weight of my quiver down, I'm not going to be using real beads. I'm going to be roughly sculpting them out of foam clay instead. Foam clay is basically craft foam in its squishiest form. You can mold it and sculpt it into custom shapes, but it still stays very lightweight. I've measured out a length of thin galvanized wire that goes all the way around my quiver. I then take a hunk of foam clay and start making large beads directly onto that wire. Artemises are pretty rough looking, so mine are too. Once I've made the beads go all the way around my wire, I bend it into shape around the quiver and leave it to dry for 24 hours. That long drying time is the only downside of foam clay. It's not the quickest method, so you will have to wait a bit before you can move on to the next step. Once they're dry, I'm going to give them a few quick coats of primer with Mod Podge to prep them for painting. And after that's dry, I'm going to give them a few quick coats of dark green paint. And then after that's dry, I'm going to attach the string of beads to my quiver. Once again, I'm going to be using hot glue because the beads are lightweight enough and hot glue works great for attaching foam to fabric. And we're done decorating. Now we just have to figure out how to attach it to a belt so that it will stay on my hip. Because this quiver sits at my hip, it needs to have two places where it attaches to a belt. One up at the top to keep it near at my hand and the other close to the bottom at a balancing point to keep the quiver from tipping over. I'm going to do this by making attachments out of D-rings, foam, and googly eyes. I sketch out a template for the base of the attachment and adjust it to fit my D-ring's size. This attachment holds the D-ring to my quiver, so it needs to be small enough to fit through the D-ring, but long enough to physically support the quiver's weight. It takes me a few tries to get the size right, but once I do, I transfer the shape onto 2mm foam and cut it out. The googly eyes are going to be my fake decorative rivets, because they're all perfectly round and uniform in size. I'm simply going to hot glue them down to my foam bases. Then I do a coat of Mod Podge to prime them for painting and let them dry for 20 minutes. Once my primer is dry, I hand paint on a couple coats of gold acrylic paint. When they're fully dry, I can attach them and the D-rings to my quiver. I need these attachments to be strong enough to hold the weight of my quiver, so I'm using contact cement again. Like before, go outside, put on your respirator, coat the back of your foam attachments and where they'll sit on your quiver with contact cement and let them prep for 15 minutes. Once the contact cement is dry, carefully set your D-ring and attachment into place. When they're fully cured, your D-rings should be strong enough to hold your quiver up. And there you have it, one quiver for the goddess of the hunt. And it's a pretty quick and easy build. I did this all in about a day and a half and used only materials I found at my local craft store. And once you have the base shape down, it's very easy to customize with different fabric or a specific paint job, to add different detailing out of leather or foam, or to mix up the hardware you use on it. Since it has a foam base, it's an incredibly lightweight prop and it's not going to weigh you down during a long con day. The fabric covering also protects your foam so it's not going to scratch or ding up easily. And since we used contact cement on our attachments, they're all incredibly durable so they can withstand a lot of stress and movement. I hope you've learned some useful crafting tips today and that you feel more confident that you're capable of making any type of prop even if you're feeling a bit unsure about it. Thank you so much for watching today and be sure to subscribe to this channel so you can catch next month's tutorial where I'll be finishing up this project by making the arrows that match. If you found this tutorial helpful, please drop us a like or you can drop me a comment below if there's any crafting techniques you'd like to see me cover in the future. As always, I'm Arcady and I will see you back here next time for more Running With Scissors.